the Deccan Plateau extending south of Satpura hill ranges is bordered by the Ghats on its western and eastern sides. The western Ghats extend from the Salher Malher peaks located in the north and the western Ghats run parallel to the Arabian Sea through the entire length of the peninsula. The southern Ghats known as Annamalai Hills are separated from the northern central Ghats by a wide gap known as Pala Ghat Gap. Learning Objectives At the end of this chapter, you will be able to discuss the following related to Peninsular Plateau. Physiography Climate Soils Natural Vegetation and Animals Population and Settlement Economic Development Industries Tourism Transportation Natural Hazards Central Island Introduction The word Peninsula is derived from two Latin words Pain, almost, and Insula, island. Hence, the land that is almost like an island is called Peninsula. It indicates the portion of the land surrounded by water on three sides. It is the land that appears to be projecting into the sea. The land lying on the south of North Indian plains is considered as Peninsular India, one of the ancient landmasses on earth. Major parts of Peninsular India have igneous and metamorphic rocks and it covers approximately 38% of India's total geographical area. Peninsular India is a storehouse of different minerals, mainly the Aravali Mountains, Chota Nagpur Plateau, Eastern Ghats and the Karnataka Plateau are well known for their mineral wealth. The Western Ghats form a water divide separating the drainage of Arabian Sea and Bay of Bengal, while River Narmada is considered as a boundary separating the peninsula area in two divisions V, Central Highlands and Deccan Plateau. Physiography the region stretching from the southern edge of the North Indian plains up to the Narmada Valley is called the Central Highlands. It chiefly comprises of the peninsula area that forms a part of Ganga River Basin, the Aravali Mountains, East Rajasthan Upland, Malwa Plateau, Bundelkhand, Bhagelkhand, Chota Nagpur, and the Vindhya range from the subdivision of the central highlands. Most of the rivers originating in this physiography division flow in a southwest to northwest direction. This indicates the general direction of slope of the region. Aravali Mountains The Aravali presently in the form of a chain of hills is supposed to be the oldest mountain range in India stretching in the southwest northeast direction. Its width and height decreases towards northeast. Aravali is represented by hills between Mount Abu and Ajmer with the highest peaks as Guru Shikhar. They appear more or less as a chain of broken hills. This has resulted in narrowing of the Aravali range in the central part, giving the entire hill chain a shape of a dumbbell. These hills form a part of the water divide between the drainage of Arabian Sea and Bay of Bengal. The East Rajasthan uplands extend eastwards from the foothill of Aravali Hills. The region is characterized by narrow low hills running in the southwest northeast direction. Otherwise, it is flatland. The mean altitude in this area is around 300 meter through a few hills rise to 600 meter. The area is mostly drained by Banas River, a tributary of River Chambal and Sindh. The area close to the channels of these rivers, particularly that of River Chambal, is known for badland topography, which is also known as Bihars or ravines. Bundelkhand The region lying on the northeast of Malwa Plateau is known as Bundelkhand that spreads in the northern part of Madhya Pradesh and adjoining portion of South Uttar Pradesh. The rocks found in this area are mostly granite. 
northern part of Bundelkhand is a remarkably flat land that smoothly merges with the North Indian plains. The flat land is separated by a series of steeply rising plateaus. The overall topography of Bundelkhand may be described as smooth, undulating terrain with a few isolated hills. The major river flowing towards north is Sindh, which merges ultimately into Yamuna River. Malwa Plateau. This is located in the southwestern part of the Central Highlands. The average elevation of the plateau is 500 meter. It is characterized by low relief and undulating topography, spotted with low hills that rise above the plateau surface. Major part of Malwa Plateau falls in the state of Madhya Pradesh and is located between Aravali Range in the west and Vindhya Range in the south. The western part of the region drained by the river Mahi, while the Chambal River drains the central part, and the Betwa River and the headwaters of Dhasan and Kane Rivers drain the east. Vindhyachal and Bhagelkhand The region of the southeast of Bundelkhand and the east of Malwa Plateau is known as Vindhyachal Bhagelkhand. This area is mostly drained by River Son and its tributaries. The Vindhyachal forms a chain of scraps running in the southwest northeast direction. However, though steep, the northern scraps are somewhat discontinuous as against their southern counterparts, which forms a continuous wall like structure. Most of the Vindhyachal area falls within the state of Madhya Pradesh, while its eastern extension forms small part of eastern Uttar Pradesh. Chota Nagpur Plateau Much of this plateau spreads in Jharkhand and extends into the adjoining states like West Bengal, Chhattisgarh and Odisha. It is one of the mineral-rich regions of the country, with central part of this region having large tracts of crinite genus, the rocks of Gondwana formation bearing high-grade coal seams, have made this region minerally rich. The scraps separating a series of different plateaus have given rise to the magnificent waterfalls. The Vindhya Range The Vindhya Range forms a boundary between North and South India and spreads from western part of Madhya Pradesh to Bihar in the east for a distance of about 1,100 kilometers. The altitude of this range is about 450 to 600 meters. But at few places, it may exceed to 900 meters. It does not have many peaks. The southern margin of this region defines the edge of Narmada Channel. The southern slopes of Vindhya Range are quite steep, while northern slopes seem gentle. Climate The vast size of Peninsular Plateau region shows a large variation in climate. Winters are dry periods. Summers is very hot, with the temperature of more than 45 degrees Celsius in the month of May. The rainy season is from June to September, and the annual rainfall is between 750 mm to 1,500 mm. To the east of Aravali Range, Madhya Pradesh and Jharkhand experience humid subtropical climate. Soils Moisture retentive black soil containing a high percentage of clay is formed from basalt rock and is found in Madhya Pradesh. Red soils deficient in nitrogen, phosphorus, and humus but rich in iron ore are found in the Aravalis. Laterite soils are formed in regions, getting heavy rainfall. Natural vegetation and animal. The natural vegetation in Malwa region is tropical dry forest with scattered teak forests having main trees as baboon, bombax and acacia. Antelope, blackbuck and chinkara are some common animals. Rapid deforestation has led to environmental problems such as acute water scarcity and the danger of the region getting desertified. The central highland has dry deciduous forest that shows a variety of vegetation but sal forest being predominant. Forests range from dry to wet and the height of tree up to 25 meters. 
The plateau is marshy in some places and in other parts is covered with bamboo clumps and shrubs. Central Highland inhibits animals like tiger, Asian elephant, antelope, black buck, wild dog and chinkara. White birds include lesser floricon, Indian grey hornbill etc. Horn population and settlement. Population density on the peninsular plateau region is 200 to 500 person per square kilometer except Chhattisgarh where it is 100 to 200 person per square kilometer 2011 census. There are numerous tribes in the region like Beels and Miras who differ in remarkable degrees from the regional population in their dialects and social life. Periods of Maratha rule led to the growth of sizable Marathi communities which are now seen in the regions of Indore and Ujjain. A significant number of Marwaris, Jats and Rajputs also live in the region. Ujjain has been a political, economic and cultural capital of the Malwa region in the ancient times and Indore is presently the largest city and commercial center. Economic Development Bundelkhand and adjoining areas have vast resources in terms of land, forests and minerals, but the area is lagging in agriculture and industry. Agriculture Agriculture is the main occupation of the people with cotton and soya beans as important cash crops. All districts have their economy mainly based on agriculture. But the infertility of land, low productivity and lack of irrigation facilities and non-use of modern methods has hindered the development of agriculture. The other major crops grown are wheat, rice, juar, maize, bajra, gram, mung, urad and soya bean. Peninsular plateau of India is dependent on rains of irrigation. Second major source being ponds, which are spread all over. Mining Malwa Plateau is the sole producer of white and red colored slate in India. Diamonds are found in Panna district, constitute Bundelkhand's most well known mineral wealth. Dimensional stones, including granite and sandstone, are more valuable reserves of Bundelkhand. Largely used minerals. In the fertilizer industry is rock phosphate found in Lalitpur and Chhatarpur and low-grade iron is also found in Lalitpur. The Amodha Valley in Chotanagpur Plateau is rich in coal deposits and so it's considered as prime region of cooking coal in India. Due to presence of variety of minerals like mica, bauxite, copper, limestone, iron ore and coal, this region shows well-developed mining activities. Important coal fields include Jharia, Rani Ganj, West Bokaro, East Bokaro and Ramgarh. Industries Malwa region has large centers of textile production in Indore and Ujjain as textiles is the major industry. Important source of income for the tribal population is handicrafts. Colored lequa wear from Ratlam, rag dolls from Indore, and paper mash articles from Indore, Ujjain, and several other centers are well known. Indore has a large scale factory that produces diesel engines. Transportation Bus and train services cover major parts of the central highlands. Jabalpur, Indore, and Bhopal have interstate bus termini and good road network. An extensive rail network. Criss-cross the region with Jabalpur serving as headquarters for the West Central Railway Zone of the Indian Railways. Tourism Bundelkhand and Bhagelkhand have a rich cultural background. Bundelkhand has numerous forts, palaces and temples. Madhya Pradesh, a land of ancient culture and tradition, is famous for its archaeological monuments and places of pilgrimage for all the religions like Hindu, Muslims, Jains and Buddhists. Ujjain city on the bank of river Shipra is famous for Kumbh Mela.
natural hazards and environmental problems. Main environmental problems of the region are related to deforestation, mining and industrialization. Power generation, urbanization, vehicle movement and development projects. Forest cover in the region is decreasing due to random cutting of trees. Development projects, mining activities and transport development have led to the loss of thousands of hectares of valuable forests. Expansion of agricultural activities has caused loss of some valuable forests. Peninsular uplands are the storehouse of India's minerals and fuel resources. Deccan to the south of Narmada has an inverted triangle with its base in the north and the apex in the south. It is the Deccan Plateau. The Satpura range along with the Mahadev and Maikal hills forms the broad base of this triangle. The Meghalaya Plateau and associated hill complex from the northeast India are also part of Deccan Plateau. Lower Ganga Plains and the Sundarban Delta have separated these from the largest portion of the Deccan Plateau. The triangular region to the south of Satpura Range comprises of a number of plateaus. The western, the eastern Ghats form the margins of the Deccan Plateau. Maharashtra Plateau is made up of basalt rock and the basalt layers are almost horizontal and this gives up an appearance of a step-like structure to the entire landscape. So, these basaltic formations are called Deccan Trap. The Karnataka Telangana Plateau, known as Maiden, is mainly made up of granite and granitic genius rocks. The Deccan Plateau is divided into following subregions: Satpura, Mahadev, Maikal Range, Maharashtra Plateau. Karnataka Telangana Plateau. Satpura, Mahadev, Maikal Range. This is a group of ranges extending in an east west direction in Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh and forms the northern edge to the Deccan Plateau. In the extreme west is the Satpura Range occupying the area between Narmada and Tapi rivers. Satpura Range starts from eastern Gujarat and extends eastwards for a distance of 800 kilometers. Its continuity is broken in the central part and this gap is known as Burhanpur Gap. Provides an access to North India. The hilltops are more or less in the form of plateaus of varying sizes growing to a height of 700 meter with a few hills over 900 meters. Narmada, Mahanadi and Vain Ganga gather headwaters from this hill range. Maharashtra Plateau The northwestern part of the Deccan Plateau is known as the Maharashtra Plateau, whose western limit is marked by the Western Ghats. The basalt rocks of this region are formed by lava that outpoured from the number of fissures and spread over the region. The maximum thickness of this basalt is supposed to be around 2 kilometers. Due to the horizontal nature of basalt rocks, the entire region has an appearance of a series of flatlands placed at different heights. The hilltops in this plateau are generally flat. The altitude of the plateau ranges from 400 meter to 600 meter. The northern portion of this plateau is occupied by Tapi Basin that slopes in the westward direction. The eastern part of this plateau is occupied by Vardha Vain Ganga Basin. Karnataka Telangana Plateau The Karnataka Telangana Plateau is the southmost part of the Deccan Plateau, covering its large portion. It is a region of crystalline rocks, mainly granite and granitic genius, as well as metamorphic forms of some sedimentary formations. The area consists of parts of Godavari and Krishna basins in its north and Kaveri basin in the south. The plateau is also spotted with a number of low and rounded granite hills. The average altitude of Karnataka plateau, that is, maidens, is 400 meter and is characterized by a number of low hills separating the basin of many rivers. The plateau slopes from west to east. 
Along the eastern and northern side of this maiden is situated Telangana Plateau, with eastern Ghats as its eastern boundary. It is flat with few scattered hills and have average height of 300 to 600 meters. The Eastern Plateau. This shows the sub-regions namely Mahanadi Basin, Dhandakaranya and Garjat Hill. Mahanadi Basin. The area to the south of Chotanagpur Plateau is relatively low-lying regions and it is surrounded by hill ranges or plateau. It occupies central part of Chhattisgarh state and western part of Odisha. The Mekal range forms its western boundary, while the eastern Ghats form the eastern limit of this region. Dhandkaranya, the southern part of Chhattisgarh and southwest part of Odisha, is known as Dhandkaranya, famous for its iron ore deposits. Its central part is a high-rising plateau with height of 700 to 800 meters. The plateau is practically divided into two halves by the east-west flowing Indravati River. Garhujata Hills The hills occupying the northwestern part of Odisha is Garhujata Hills. It is drained by river Brahmani and Baitarani. Climate Most part of the plateau of peninsular India exhibits tropical wet and dry climate, apart from a semi-arid zone to the east of the western Ghats. Winters and early summers are long dry periods with temperature above 18 degrees Celsius. Summer is very hot and the temperature in the interior areas can rise above 45 degrees Celsius. The rainy season is from June to September and the annual rainfall is between 750 to 1500 millimeters. Only central eastern Tamil Nadu receives rainfall during winter due to northwest monsoons. Tropical semi-arid climate is seen in the middle part which includes Karnataka interior and western Tamil Nadu, western Andhra Pradesh and central Maharashtra. The region is famine prone due to unreliable rainfall. Soils Black soil suitable for cotton and sugarcane is well developed in the Deccan Plateau region of Maharashtra. Red soils are found in Tamil Nadu, Karnataka Plateau and Andhra Plateau Natural Vegetation and Animals Varied landscapes and other physical features of the Deccan Plateau have rich variety of forests. Tropical evergreen, tropical dry deciduous and thorny shrub forests are dense but narrow. Sandalwood has a very high commercial value. Due to pressure from population, agriculture and mining, forests are being depleted. A variety of grazing animals from the four-horned antelope and black buck to the gore and wild buffalo are found here. Dole, sloth bear and other carnivores also found. Globally threatened. Jadon's coresser, corsa, is one of the 300 bird species found here. Cheese. Population and Settlement the Deccan Plateau is home to many languages and people. Bheel and Gon people live in hills along the northern and northeastern edges of the plateau and speak various languages. Marathi is the main language of the northwestern Deccan in the state of Maharashtra. Telugu and Kannada are the predominant languages of Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka respectively. Tamil is the main language of Tamil Nadu to the south of the plateau, Malayalam that of the hills and coast of the southwest in the state of Kerala. The city of Hyderabad is an important center of Urdu language in the Deccan. The plateau region of Maharashtra has favored the growth of clustered settlements owing to its rich soil, good water supply and developed agriculture. The characteristic features of northern maiden of Karnataka and Rayala Seema area of Andhra Pradesh is widely spaced villages. The tract between Kaveri and Tungabhadra has many tanks, thus exhibiting compact settlements. Scattered helmets are seen in Malnad area and Tamil Nadu uplands. Economic Development Agriculture The principal crops of the Deccan Plateau are cotton, sugarcane and rice. 
rice is mainly grown in the eastern part of Deccan Plateau, while wheat is produced in the northern part. Jowar, cotton, sugarcane and oil seeds are grown mostly in Maharashtra Plateau, while bajra is major in the western part of Deccan Plateau. Pulses grow in the northern part of the plateau. Tanks, called kere in Kannada, are the predominant traditional method of irrigation in the central Karnataka plateau and are fed by canals branching off from streams and valleys. In Bhandara, lakes are chief source of irrigation and are essential for rice and sugar cultivation. Bhandaras or check dams are used to raise the water level of rivers so they can flow into channels and also from sizing water to form large reservoir. Mining Maharashtra Plateau is gifted with various industrial important minerals like manganese, coal, iron ore, limestone, copper, bauxite, slica, sand and common salt. These are found in large quantities on the Deccan Plateau in the districts of Bhandara, Nagpur and Chandrapur is found bituminous coal while Karnataka is main gold producing state. Industry Deccan Plateau is an industrial well developed region with Maharashtra as one of the most industrialized state in the country. Cotton textile industry is the largest and the oldest industry in the state. The Karnataka and Telangana Plateau are rich in mineral resources. Important minerals include high grade iron ore, copper, manganese, chromite, china clay, and limestone. Karnataka state has rich deposits of cranites. Other industries include machine tools, electronic products, telecom equipments, etc. Hubs of IT industry are located in Hyderabad, Bengaluru, and Pune. Tourism Deccan Plateau has many tourist places of natural, cultural, historical, and religious importance. Udagamandalam, Uti of Tamil Nadu, and Mahabaleshwar of Maharashtra are famous hill stations of the region. Bengaluru and Hyderabad are famous for their gardens. There are many historical places in Aurangabad, Bidar, Bijapur, Mysore, Pune, etc. Besides these, there are many pilgrimage places in this plateau region that attract people from all over the world. Natural Hazards and Environmental Problems Large-scale mining activities and a large number of industries have led to water and soil pollution. After the extraction of minerals, the mining areas become useless for other purpose. The western part of the plateau region is an earthquake-prone region. Summary. You have learned about physiography, climate, soils, natural vegetation and animals, population and settlement, economic development, industries, tourism, transportation and natural hazards relating to peninsular plateau.